Hello, I'm Tim Windsor from BlackBerry Developer Relations. In this video, I want to show you how to set up our Ant build script for making a WebRoast application and show you how easy and useful it can be working with a text editor like Sublime. So for example, here I am looking at the index of my WebRoast application. And I can build it with a script just by pressing Control B. In the background, this script is deleting the old version I had, uh, zipping up all the files that I, I want to build into my application, sending that zip file through my native packager, signing the application for me, and then uh, deploying that application to my device. So all of that done with just a simple keystroke. And what's really great about this is that it's so repeatable. Can do this again and again and again and it can keep building the application in exactly the same way. And let's look at how simple this is to actually set up. You actually get the script, the AMP build script, from here. DB10 WebWorks Community Samples on GitHub. Click on AMP build script and everything you need is right in here. So you can download this script inside the entire repository as a zip, and that's the easiest way. And then go to where you have that downloaded. So here, this is where I've got it, in this ant build script directory underneath the repository. And this, app, this script actually works in two parts, and that's what one of the ways I, I find it extremely useful. So there's with an ant build script, there's typically always a build.xml file. And that's the file that gets run and has all of the commands in it that, that you want to have happen. Now, what I've actually done with this is separated out into two parts. So this file, the build.xml, is, is one that you'll make very minor edits to, and it will be added to every project that you want to build. But inside, it will link back to this main one, build tab. And that's going to exist only in one spot on your computer. And that way, you can make changes that it will apply to all of your applications uh, and only have to make them in one, in one location. But then the properties and, and setup that is very specific to each project, you can do within the project. Uh, I, I find that this is really very flexible and, and powerful. So where you've set this up, You'll see the Ant, Rhino, and YUI compressor. These are additional tools that the script uses uh, in, in its, its processing. But really, the one, the main thing that you really need to be concerned about is build tab. So let's look at some of the setup that you do here. In build task, you're going to set up a your signing key password here. You'll set up an IP and password for your devices. And so you can set up default values here. Uh, separate one for, for simulator and, and tablet and BBOS. So you can build with all the SDKs at once or individually, uh, whatever is needed for, for your particular project. Uh, but everything will be defined here uh, to make everything quite simple. And then down here you'll change these default uh, SDK locations to whatever you have installed or whatever you're, you're using. So you don't have to define them if you're not using that SDK, uh, but you, of course, have to at least define one. Uh, so change this to the, uh, the actual path of the SDK on, on your machine. And another optional thing you can set up is the Ripple directory. So if you're using Ripple, uh, you have Ripple sites set up as, as a, a directory where you're putting projects or uh, perhaps you have a, a local web server like Apache, uh, as I have set up here. Uh, you can define this this path so that you can build for Ripple, and it will copy all of your application-specific files uh, to this directory, uh, and it'll, it will create the directory for you uh, as needed, and uh, you can copy everything in so you can uh, view your project in Ripple very easily. Uh, so, and that's where we're using this uh, property here, the, the AMP project name. 
Now, if you're on Windows, you won't need to change this property here, the tools directory. Uh, but on Mac, uh, we don't, we can't use the relative at home path uh, because ant exists in a different location on Mac uh, compared to Windows. Uh, so on Mac, change this to uh, a direct link to where that tools directory is, wherever you uh, download and, and, and save that to. Uh, but on Windows, you can leave this alone. And then everything else is, is relative to that. And that's all the, all the settings that you really need to get into in order to use this. There are other options uh, further, further in, but uh, nothing absolutely critical. Then let's look at the actual default build.xml file. So this is one that you have to make just a few minor changes to, such as the project name. Uh, so this is this name is used within the targets uh, to set the file name, uh, to uh, set the directory uh, where the, the things are copied to, and so on. Uh, so just set this to whichever project uh, you're working on. Uh, you can optionally change some of these things if you're using some of our optimization routines that are in the in the script uh, but they're optional now here this property if you're working on Windows you can keep as is uh, but if you're on a Mac you'll want to put an actual uh, direct link uh, same as we did for the tools directory uh, and you have to do that here as well so this is this file line here actually uh, imports all these build tasks that we defined over here. Uh, and that, that's how the sort of link between build.xml and all of these other targets that are defined in one place. And then in here is a whole bunch of documentation about how to use the actual script, how to choose which targets uh, you want to build with. So the script supports building uh, for BBOS, that's the original WebWorks SDK for uh, Blackboard 5 through 7. Uh, also supports building with the tablet SDK for Playbook 1 and 2, uh, and with the new uh, WebWorks DB10 packager. So you choose between BBOS, tablet, or BB10 within uh, your build uh, targets, and uh, then you have an option of different types of builds. So uh, with a production version, which uh, signs your, your um, signs your application for you and has no uh, debugging support turned on. Uh, there's then a uh, test version which uses uh, debug tokens rather than signing and uh, turns on Web Inspector and includes the source output. Uh, and then in the middle is the concept of a beta build. So in a beta it does full signing but at the same time turns on Web Inspector. So that's particularly useful for the uh, Built for BlackBerry uh, program. So down here, this is how you actually define it. So for example, in th this one, we're going to build for BlackBerry 10 using a production build. So signing, no web inspector. Um, in addition to building, you can actually also deploy. So you, there's commands here to show you how to do that. Uh, similar uh, concept, db10, tablet, bbos, uh, and the different types of builds, test, production, or beta. And of course, for db10, you have to choose between either a device or simulator, since they are different builds. And you can just append that to the back here, with a comma separating, and ant will figure out the right path between all of these dependencies and uh, do things all in the right order for you. Now, if you're on Windows, there's one other setup that you need to do. You want to go into System, to Advanced System Settings, Environment Variable, and set up an Ant Home variable here. So, uh, this directory that you want to set it to is where uh, that Ant installation is within the, the Tools directory. Uh, so, you set that path there and then add it into your path variables. So as you'll see, within my path here, I have 
at home, surrounded by percent, slash bin. What that does is actually add all of those and commands uh, to every command prompt that you're at. So it makes it very, very easy to actually run and from anywhere in your system. So for example, if you're at a command prompt, you can run ant and have access to it. So for example, if I was to run ant right within this directory, it will automatically use uh, the local build by XML file. Uh, so that's only really necessary on Windows. Uh, on Mac, uh, ant is already pre-built in and um, already knows all the but that is why there's a difference between uh, using this ant home value that we set locally uh, on Windows versus, versus Mac. And that's really all the setup that you need to do. Uh, that's, that's really it. There are some additional capabilities that are possible with this script. Uh, it actually will do CSS lint, JS lint, and JS hint on your, uh, on your files for you. And uh, that's an optional thing that you can turn on when you do that, you can actually uh, concatenate your CSS and JavaScript files uh, together and minify them. So that's where these properties come in. And uh, because it's ant, uh, you can actually do all sorts of different tasks and, and things within your system. Uh, but as far as getting the basic setup, that's really all you need to do. And then you're, you're ready to build. So again, hopefully this, you find this very useful. Uh, I think it will save you a great deal of time and integrate very nicely into Sublime. Uh, speaking of that, the simple way to do ant building within Sublime uh, is just to go into the tools. You can set a build system to ant. And what that means is that whenever I press click on build or press control D, it will actually run the build.xml file within the local directory for whichever file is on. So for example, when I was looking at index here, uh, the build.xml is in that folder. Within sensors, you'll see the build.xml. So when I run control D within Sublime, it'll run the default build right here. And if you look at this directory, you'll see some of the things that the, the build script is going to do behind the scenes for you. So first thing it does is create uh, this build directory. And it'll copy in all the different files that are, are needed. And from that build directory, it will create a zip file for us. And that zip file will get sent to the WebWorks packager and then built using whichever settings that we've set. And what's also very interesting is when doing either a beta build or production build, it will automatically increment the build ID for you using this file, the build.number file. And the output of the actual packager goes in this bin directory. Within here, you'll see uh, different directories for uh, the production build beta build and test build. So this is the production for DB10. And you'll see device and simulator builds separated. And then the deployment command knows exactly where to go to, to get the bar files. So give it a try. Let me know how it works for you. And I'm uh, happy to hear. Thanks very much.